Oh, nothing like the weekend. Just sitting around, cup of coffee, chilling with my favorite movies. Your Q and A's. <laughs> yes, your questions. You know, honestly, there is nothing that I enjoy more than watching your questions and uh, and answering them. And this week, I was just sitting here chilling out with Brittany and her cats, Ron and Ginny Weasley. You can guess what color they are. Blue. No. <laughs> <laughs> Brittany is is sending in a question. Uh, she's an American living in South Korea. So no matter what we do, we are worldwide. Worldwide. So anyway, let's check in with Brittany. Take it away. Hi, Jackson. My name is Brittany. I am an American living in South Korea, and I just adopted these two ginger kittens. And my issue that I'm having, or my dilemma that I'm having, is they are still scratching the couch, and I need to figure out what I'm doing wrong. So this is their cat tower I purchased, and it's right next to the window, which don't worry, that is a glass, um, so they can look out, but they can't get out. And they do scratch on it on occasion, um, it's right next to the couch, which I've seen in your videos. If they're scratching on the couch, get a po you know, a tower um, next to it. The issue with the couch is they're scratching not just here, but on the cushion itself. I don't own this couch. If they, you know, I take, they take off the covering and it's all scratched up, then I'm gonna have to pay for the couch. This is Mr. Ron. He is fascinated by the washing machine. Um, I also have these items in here for more scratching areas. So this they can climb in, uh, they manage to get the balls out of there, and he has their original bed from their foster family. I, I'm really trying to do everything you're suggesting, but I just can't figure out how to get them to stop scratching the couch without having to completely cover my couch in double-sided tape. I don't know what to do. They're great. Oh, there's Jenny. Hi, Jenny. Hi, Ginger. Say hello to Mr. Jackson. Hope this wasn't too long of a video. Thanks so much. I'll talk to you later. Or yeah, you know what I mean. Bye. Okay, and we're back. You know, first of all, what I love is that Brittany has actually watched these videos before, and it's nice to know that things are watched and people actually take the advice. So Brittany already did that. And what Brittany did especially that I like right here. So this is their cat tower I purchased, and it's right next to the window, which don't worry, that is a glass. Um, so they can look out, but they can't get out. And this is a great cat tree, it's wonderful. It's in a window, that's a good one. And they do scratch on it on occasion. Um, it's right next to the couch. And it's right next to the couch. So what we're saying there, and what I've said all along, is every time you wanna say no to your cat, you better have a great yes right next to it. And that's what Brittany has. Why is that important? It's important because other than just wanting a surface to exercise their claws and to just remove the dead sheaths of nail that collect over time, that's all what scratching is about. But where they scratch is important. And why cats scratch so much on our couch is because we sit there, because our scent is so strong on these couches and they are drawn to sort of co-mark an area. We group mark things, we all rub up against them, we all scratch them. So that makes sense why they would go there, besides the fact that our couches are really sturdy. There's never a chance that your cat is gonna reach up, scratch the couch, and have the couch tip over, unless they're like a freaking jaguar, you know? But that's not the case here because they're really cute little cats. But here's the clue that I think, Brittany, you might be missing. So let's check this out. They play on it all the time with these guys and they do scratch on it on occasion. Aha, on occasion, they will scratch those sisal covered poles. But then you show me this. It also has the original uh, scratching post from when they were at their foster, foster family. Aha, Brittany. Aha! So now we take a look at this scratcher, the one that came from their old foster home, and this thing you can tell has been well-loved, uh, well-sat-on and well-scratched. And now we go over to the couch. 
Are they scratching on the arms of the couch? No, they're not. They're scratching not just here, but on the cushion itself. Aha! They're scratching on horizontal surfaces, the tops of the arms of the couch and the cushions themselves. So your cats are letting you know that they are horizontal scratchers. Not all cats are going to want to scratch vertically. Some will go for the horizontal, some will actually go for you know more of the half up and down, that sort of triangular scratching. All cats are different in terms of their preference, but clearly Ron and Ginny dig the horizontal. Want more proof? Let's take a look. For more scratching areas, so this they can climb in, uh, they manage to get the balls out of there, and he has their original bed from their foster family. And again, see now we're looking at these very adorable little pieces of cat scratching furniture right here. I mean, mm, that's not, I want one of these. But again, take a look at the top of it, take a look at the middle of it, they're well scratched, and these again are horizontal surfaces. So now that we have established that Ron and Ginny are indeed horizontal leaning scratchers, what are we gonna do about it? Now let's go back to the yes, no of it all um, and try to get them away from scratching what you don't want them to scratch. Now because you've just picked a certain covering, and I get you, you don't wanna cover your cat, your cat. You don't want to cover your couch in double-sided sticky tape, nor do you want to cover your cat in double-sided sticky tape. That would be terrible. But you're thinking, right, you're thinking, well, I just want to say no to my cats here. So there are a couple of different ways that you can try to get through this. If we think about the fact that they're going to want to scratch near the couch, um, then you can try putting the, that horizontal scratcher, the one that, that is really right now just taking up space underneath that tower, put it right at the foot of the couch right down on the floor. So again, we're giving that uh, them that opportunity to scratch in a positive place. You can also try it actually on the couch because you said that it's a lot, it, you're not in the room when they do it, you know? That, that obviously if they started doing it when you were sitting on the couch, you'd say no and you'd put them down. So if they're doing it when you're not there, you can actually take it, if it's on the floor while you're sitting there, when you leave, you take it, you put it on the couch. Take a couple of them, put it on the couch. If you wanted to go that direction. Another direction you can go is a more hard no. If we're not gonna do double-sided tape on the couch, it can also just be something that's just not altogether all that attractive. You know, one of the things that I've used over the years would be the, the type of sort of clear plastic runners that you would put underneath your office chair. On the bottom part of that are just bumps. They're not spikes, but they're bumps. And so you just take that, you can cut it down to size and just stretch it across the couch. You leave the house, you put it down. The chances are not only will they not scratch it, but they probably won't even just sit there and they'll pick alternate places to sit around the house. Uh, the idea is that there's no way that you can say no to them when you're not around. And I think that, that if you think about a common mistake that folks make is, for instance, your cats get on the counter, you don't want them on the counter, so when you see them on the counter, you go, hey, 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 and you scoot them off, or you shake a can of coins or something and they run away. Your cats are pretty smart. All they're going to learn is that when mom or dad are in the room, I shouldn't be on the counter. But the second they leave, I'm back up again. If you don't mind them sitting on the couch, but you don't want them scratching, here's another thing that you can do, is just change the covering that you're using. I mean, that covering on the couch there, Brittany, is really comfy and really inviting. As a matter of fact, if you take a look at some of the other things that you have for the cats around the house, uh, especially the ones that came from his old foster family, they are somewhat the same type of material. So we would sort of be asking them to not scratch here but scratch here uh, not do you know a little bit of you know smurgling here but do it here we're setting them up for failure so maybe take a look at a different type of fabric altogether one that's just not as scratch worthy as what you got there or at least as your cat see is scratch worthy maybe something that's just a little less apt to get the, the claws into you know that's just uh, choices that you can make from a design perspective and from a couch preservation standpoint uh, just to preserve it. So the choices you really need to make, do I not want the cats on the couch at all? 
especially when I'm not in the house, then we've got those solutions. Do I not want to restrict their movement? I just don't want them to scratch. Then we've got the sort of the covering that you put on there, literally putting those scratchers on the couch when you're not there. And then there's the yes. Then you just want to make sure that you have those horizontal scratchers around the places that are inhabited by the humans as well. Because both the one that's under the cat tree and the ones that are off in the corner somewhere, none of them are serving a purpose other than have the cats lay on them. And the one thing I think you might be sort of skipping over here is that every piece of furniture in the house should have a purpose, just like you did with the cat tree. The cat tree's sitting in the window, gives them a great way to look out. It's right next to the couch in case they want to scratch. All of that, you did that all perfectly. Now these little other pieces of furniture get them in on the action as well. It's all up to you, how you want to approach life with your cats, what's a hard no, what's a hard yes, and what's somewhere in between. And I think I've given you a little bit of, of all of those types of solutions. But good work, Brittany. I mean, I think all the way around, you're providing a great life for these little guys, and, uh, and it looks like a fun time with them. Oh, speaking of fun times, you guys, you gotta check this out. Up, 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 don't let them get it. Up, 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 just the head going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Down comes the bird. <laughs> The bird, why? Why, Mr. Bird? Why did you go down to the ground? And then your cat Jackson catches Galaxy it and kills it. Jackson Galaxy is TV for me and cat TV. Oh, oh, am I in love with Ron right now? This cat wants to play so badly that he's playing with me on TV. Now, I have to say that this toy is something I'm awfully proud of. I designed it, I've been selling it for years. So if you're interested in uh, my air prey wand, then just go to jacksongalaxy.com. I just had to put that in there. Now in the meantime, I'm going back to chill with Ron Weasley right now and continue my weekend. So you guys, you know, have a good weekend, have yourself some coffee, tea, whatever you like, and watch your favorite cat programming, like Ron. Light, love, and mojo to you guys. Take me home, Ron. Don't let them get it up, 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 just the head going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Down comes the bird. <laughs> the bird, why? Why, Mr. Bird? Why did you go down to the ground? And then your cat Jackson catches Galaxy goes, is TV for me and cat TV. Every time Truly the cat daddy. Meow.